transmission media. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to describe the characteristics of copper transmission media and state the applications and advantages for copper transmission media. So, transmission media can be split into two categories. First of all, we've got guided and unguided. So, media we're referring to is the method used to guide an electromagnetic waveform to its destination. Most of the guided media is usually over short distances and generally made from copper. Unguided media systems use radio waves, or rather, the waves are not restricted to a pathway. So telecoms around the house. So basically, electricity is fed through the home using copper wire. And depending on the current to be passed through it, will depend on the gauge of wire. The maximum rating you would normally have in a home would be 13 amps at 50 hertz. So telecommunication signals are of a much higher frequency than mains and require a more carefully designed guide for those to travel down. So in the house we've got your PC connected to your printer using a serial USB cable. You have your TV, unguided media, a bit of guided media, so you've got cable, cable TV, your satellite comes in all via coax into the back of your TV or set-top box. You control your TV with your infrared remote control. You have a laptop. You can also have commercial radio coming into your house. Your ADSL might be coming in, your broadband. In your main room you may have speaker cables running around. You may have a wireless telephone. Or and of course you've got your mobile phone which uses uh, GSM or 3G or 4G. And of course to connect your computer through to your hub you may be using Twisted Pair and you've got Wi-Fi. So let's have a look at these in a bit more detail. So guided media is so called because it contains the electrical signal within its boundaries. Guided media, usually called cable, is mostly made from copper as it has the best conductivity to price ratio. Gold is much better conductor, but it is rather more expensive. Cable also comes in many forms depending on its application. Let's look at the first one, UTP. This is the most common cable in use today. A pair of copper wires are twisted together to limit interference. These can be bundled together in larger cables. The most common is a four pair cable used in networks. Cables are categorized by how much information it can carry. The more twists per foot, the better the noise reduction. They are very cost efficient and easy to install. All data rates are for maximum runs of 100 meters and used in frequencies from 100 hertz to 5 megahertz. There are a number of different categories. So for instance, we have Cat1 cable, which is your basic telephone cable. Cat2, voice and data up to four megabits per second. Cat3 has three twists per foot and up to 10 megabits per second. Cat4 up to 16 megabits per second. Cat5, 100 meg. Cat5e up to one gigabit per second. Cat6 up to 1 gigabit watt with less interference than Cat5e. So to install Cat5 or any UTP, there are a number of common elements. This is what it looks like. Twisted pair, you can see that pairs of wires are twisted together. And these twisted wires are then twisted around each other for better interference cancelling. A few simple tools, such as a crimp tool, wire strippers, and possibly even uh, a scalpel, is all you need. RJ45 connectors, these are the typical LAN cable connectors. Commonly found when connecting to your router or patch panel. 
RJ11 connectors, more commonly found in telephone handsets or modems, which brings us on to shielded twisted pair. It works like unshielded twisted pair but with the addition of a foil or copper shield which reduces interference and crosstalk. Because of the shield the cable is more expensive, heavier and more difficult to install. The shield must be connected to earth but only at one end. Another type of guided media is the coaxial cable. So as data rates and frequencies increased there became a need for a different type of cable. This one is the RG11 coax cable. It has a solid copper core, something called a dielectric, which is essentially an insulator. The second half of the cable, if you like, the second, the other half of the pair is the copper braid. And it's all covered by insulation. So coax is used for frequencies of 100 kHz to 500 MHz and each cable has a radio government rating or RG. It's constructed differently from twisted pair so instead of two wires there's a central core usually copper surrounded by a di dielectric or insulating sheath. This is then surrounded by a foil or braided conductor usually made of copper. This outer conductor also acts as a shield against to connect your coax, you would use different types of coax connectors. This is the bayonet network connector, otherwise known as a BNC. This pushes on and locks into place, making it quite a secure connector. This is a female push-on connector. Uh, this type is generally used in domestic television and video uses. It's less secure and it doesn't lock into place, but uses friction. We have the F-type connector. It's usually used in domestic satellite systems. It's held onto place. It is held onto the braid by crimping, while the core itself acts as the pin. And then we have uh, sub-TV connectors or STVs, usually found inside equipment to connect modules or RF stages.